Thanks for staying with us. Now, according to the World Health Organization, cannabis is by far the most widely cultivated, trafficked, and abused illicit drug. Um, half of all drug seizures worldwide are cannabis seizures. Now, the geographical spread of these or those seizures is also global, covering practically every country of the world. Now, according to, um, about 147 million people, that's about 2.5% of the world's population, consume cannabis as the um, annual prevalence compared with 0.2% consumption of cocaine and 0.2% consumption of um, opates. Now, in present decades, cannabis abuse has grown more rapidly than cocaine and opate abuse. Um, the most rapid growth in cannabis abuse since the 1960s has been in developed countries in North America, Western Europe and Australia. Cannabis has become more closely linked to youth culture and the age of initiation is usually lower than um, lower than for other drugs. And analysis of um, cannabis market shows that low prices coincide with high levels of abuse and vice versa. So today we're asking, what do you think this impact of cannabis is on life? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. You can also tweet at us at Wish or Africa one with the hashtag Wish. I was going to ask, well, I was going to ask one question. That's why I'm smiling. Biko, who has done cannabis here, honestly speaking? <laughs> <laughs> because... <laughs> I've never done it in my life. <laughs> but I had classmates. They could swear by that thing that if they want to write exam, like I had two classmates that graduated with a 2-1. I studied physics in university. Mm -hmm. So before they go write any exam, that guy, Pius, has to be high. So when it comes to it, <laughs> you just download. And he came out with a very, very brilliant score. Like he could swear by it that without that thing, he can't retain anything he's reading and all of that. And I see that a lot of people say this. I have a friend of mine, very put together young chap. He tells me that, oh, anytime I need inspiration to go and, um, what's it called? For, if, I, if I want to write a very strong proposal to a big client, I first of all go and take, he called the thing. I will not call it, but <laughs> I think that thing is, that one is mixed. They called loud or something. He has to first of all <laughs> take a bit of it before he can, you know. Be, be able to write the proposal. I say, now, wow. Is it that he's only one that does not know how life is? Yeah, I, I think just like every other thing, something, some people, some, it's a stimulant hmm. in its own way. It's Ozebo. the same way people take, um, you take, some people are addicts to, to Panadol, painkillers. Uh, pet drinks. You know, painkillers, different things. So it's just another, but like you just said, um, you know, the survey shows that it is the most, you know, sought after. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me come to Oti. I want to bring in our doctor. Oti, quickly. Oti, are you there? Yes. Okay. No. No, no and no and no. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Mm. No to what? Have I asked any question? I just said, say your mind. <laughs> uh, that's my mind regarding the the topic of conversation or the drug of conversation. No and no and no. But, I know there are a lot of positives. I know that yes, um, if we want to start to break it down, you know, there are lots of I mean you hear C B D all over the place now, you hear THC all over the place, there are medicinal uses, people with glaucoma, people with all sorts of, you know, pain managing pain. My concern is in this part of our own world. That's where my no, no, and no comes from. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so Dr. Banki Awushika is a U.S.-based physician with a strong interest in wellness. He specializes in nephrologist um, hypertension, dialysis, and kidney transplant medicine with an emphasis on preventive care at um, his practice, West Orange Nephrology, Orlando, Florida. But he's joined us live in studio as a friend of the house. And he said, and he's an expert in this subject matter of <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I've been itching to have this conversation. So you can imagine how when I saw the headline that Akere Dolu, I mean National Assembly is trying to back him to legalize uh, cannabis. I say finally <laughs> I get to bring Dr. Bandi for us to discuss cannabis because this Igbo matter is a serious matter. 
it's not something I mean, a, again you could just it could make real sense right that a lot of people are using it anyway so why don't we legalize it so that maybe the fears that people are talking about you know having um, um, laced drugs and all of that out outside there maybe mm. all those will be reduced and people will now start taking you know a more um, controlled like you know healthy whatever variation of whatever it is but hey I saw a report that in the U.S., because they have legalized cannabis, mm -hmm. like literally all their staff, they come into the, <laughs> the office, they're all high, <laughs> you know. But they don't know if that is impacting on their jobs. So you help me out, right? What exactly is the impact of cannabis on life? You know, is it something that is truly detrimental? Or is it like this, my friend, that is always on point and is, is coming out with straight A's whenever he, he goes to smoke something? <laughs> Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is, let's not use the word abuse with cannabis. Let's use the word use. So with cocaine and everything else, it's abuse. With cannabis, it's use. And I say that because cannabis is, has a stigma attached to it. It has a stigma attached to it because of, I want to say cannabis, I'm referring to THC specifically. Because cannabis could be, it's a, it's a dioecious plant. It can be male, female. The male produces hemp, which they use for clothing or hair. Or hair, exactly. Hair it's more, it's more, it's a softer material, it's a softer fiber. Oh, the male one. Yes, mm -hmm. the male plant. So is the female one is deadly. The female one is not deadly. <laughs> it produces THC. <laughs> What's THC? You're perpetuating the, the stigma. It's not deadly. But it produces THC and they they work together to produce it. Now the male produces some THC. And THC is tetrahydrocannabinol. And it's the psychoactive part of cannabis that everyone refers to. And it's the part that's gotten most pressed because many people, some people that get it become very altered. When they get high, they can become very altered. But see, the interesting thing about cannabis is most people, I'll dare to say all people, but I can't say all, I haven't seen all people. But most people that use it usually have a condition that's being treated by it. Sometimes unbeknownst to them. Because it's a social drug, right? So people just peer pressure, they, they pressurize their peers to, to, to use it. Um, especially the, 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 well, actually not just smoking, but the, the gummies, the edible ones, which is more acceptable in society. Brownies, they yes. put it inside all those things. They put it inside all kinds of things. So I'll first of all start we by... We know them, we know them. How do you know? <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I've done my research, please. <laughs> Go ahead, doctor. So, so, so one thing I didn't say... And, I mean, you alluded to already by talking about the fact that um, um, the governor of Ondo State is, 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 is advocating it and because it's illegal in Nigeria. So I think that's the first thing that I should, I should say, that it is illegal. Um, so when you're asking me if I use I'll say, totally no, I don't use at all because mm. it's illegal. But in the States, I do. I do because it's legal and it's um, in Florida specifically, it's um, medically um, supervised. So it's under medical supervision. So I have a medical marijuana clinic where I see patients that want to start using it and I evaluate to see if they're a candidate for it. And by and large, most people are because there's a condition that they have that it treats. You had alluded to earlier medicinal, medicinal properties of it, what it treats. You mentioned glaucoma, um, um, pain, um, seizures. That's a big one, especially in, in kids. They use THC and CBD because CBD is another derivative. It's not as psychoactive as THC is. Mm. But they use that combination for seizure um, treatments in kids. And why I subscribe to it, it's much safer than the alternatives for pain. Heroin, you mentioned earlier. Tramadol. Um, tramadol, oh, fentanyl, mm. that everyone talks about has mm -hmm. caused all kinds of celebrities to go, go under. Um, it's actually, they actually find that by, by making it medicinally available, they're decreasing the amount of people that are actually addicted and overdose on opium, on heroin, on narcotics. Mm. So by decreasing that, it's getting a better spotlight in America. Now, of course, some people are going to abuse it. Some people are going to mix it with other substances to make it even more potent. Potent, yes. To, to give that psychoactive effect. Uh, people want to get high, but many people don't get high 
many people get relaxed. You mentioned that it's a stimulant. It actually can tranquilize as well, depending on what type you use. There's sativa, there's indica. I was coming to that because now, from what the House of Representatives, they, what they are trying to back Akari Delu on is, the, is growing of cannabis sativa for export. How big is cannabis sativa? Like, what exactly is the economic power that it has? Because I know that many times I've taken reports on customs, um, what's it called? Um, um, NDLA. Hijacking, NDLA, hi, um, um, arresting a truckload of cannabis, you know, especially around that Ondo area. So maybe the governor has just seen it down. This thing is business. Let's go just convert it to business. So how lucrative and how, how um, what's it called? What's the, what's the demand on cannabis sativa, especially the one that um, they're trying to um, back him up for exports? Okay. So there was a particular um, drawing I saw just now on sativa versus indica. Yes. Indica, they were more or less sleepy. Indica yeah. is in the couch. Hmm. It, it knocks you out. Sativa makes you more elated and happy. And sativa and indica, but especially sativa because it's not safer. It's milder, hmm. so to speak, especially for, for the first-time users. Some economies have referred to cannabis as green oil. Hmm. That's how lucrative it is. It's a very lucrative business. And, you know, in some economies, um, some countries, especially in the West Indies, it's very, very commonplace. You mm. go to people's houses, they do you want to you want to drink or do you want some marijuana? It's it's just a very common it's a social drug. Mm. And they don't worry about the effects of getting high. Because if you get high with it, you will come down. There's no danger like in when you use fentanyl or heroin, if you take too much of it, you get too high, you stop breathing. That's overdose. Mm. So they OD on it by stopping breathing. Mm. That can happen with cannabis, which is why it's much safer for pain. It's one of the few substances in the world that are, are, are purported to actually um, encourage the growth of brain cells. So at some point, people with strokes will benefit from that. And that will become mainstay of therapy. We're not there yet. Some countries like Israel, they're really pushing that idea. And they have all kinds of ways to take it, not just smoking it, is you can vape it, you can use the gummies, you can actually use pills. You can use patches as well. You can use patches, you can use creams. Mm. Some countries, they use it as douches because it helps for dysmenorrhea, the period pain. So there are different ways to get it in. Really? Mm. But if you get high with it, time will bring it down. What I always tell my patients is, if, you feel, if you're taking it for the first time, don't drive because it increases your, your sense of, of your depth of perception. Okay. So you're looking at that car, it may look a little closer, <laughs> you know, or a little bigger. So it increases depth of perception, but it's something that you can manage with time. You mentioned your friend was using it for exams. Mm -hmm. Many people use it before they work out. They use it before they, they it helps your creative juices flow. Hmm. So before they write, they, the writers, they will use it before they sing. They use it before they compose new songs. They use it so it's had its effect since the beginning of. I mean, it's been around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, its place in our economy has to become solid because it's very lucrative, and its place in health has to become solid too because it's very beneficial for many, many people. Hmm. Okay, let's take a break. <laughs> but the way the doctor is talking now, you will let's say. But I know Uti and um, AJ, they are itching to, have to ask a question. But let's just go on a very short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the impact of cannabis on life, and we have with us. Dr. Banji Aoshika, just really explaining it into the details. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow after one with the hashtag Wayshow. So, Uti, let me come to you, then I'll come back to you, Angel. <laughs> well, so, Dr. Aoshika has made a very compelling case. I'm telling you. For... <laughs> For the use, as he would say, and not the abuse of cannabis. Mm. So I hear you, and I, I totally 
everything that you've said is totally positive around the economic opportunities, um, the multiple use cases. But please, I just want to center the conversation back on Nigeria hmm. and the fact that we know that our roads are not straight. So a drug that is illegal today, we're already cultivating it. I think, oh, you said something about Ondo, right? Yes. And I know that there are a couple of other states where, I mean, we're, we're currently a huge producer of this, mm. right? So I'm trying to understand what your thoughts are around the legalization of this. And is it going to... We already have a problem today with local use. When we talk about crime, when we talk about all these things, we have all these issues, right? But I don't want to go down to those negatives. We also have cultural issues around Igbo. It's not Igbo. I don't, I don't see, like, how do you start to change those mindsets, right? Around the fact that people are smoking Igbo and they're smoking it openly, right? Let's put it that way. If you call it cannabis, it sounds very posh. Um, so people are smoking Igbo and they're smoking it openly. We already have a problem. So how do we, if we say we're going to legalize this, what are your thoughts around stopping that abuse that we currently have now so that the right kind of people can benefit from it? That's a great question. So, so the abuse of <laughs> Igbo, using the word you use, um, is something that happens because of the, the stigma attached to it and the fact that it's illegal. So anything that's illegal, when there was a prohibition of alcohol back in the 20s, it was illegal. So anything that's illegal will be sold for a profit, will be sold under dangerous conditions. People would would take other drugs to help them develop the more confidence to, to go and, you know, hash it out with their contemporary, whoever they're sending it to. There's just that world that happens, that environment that's created when it's illegal. When it's legalized, things will change. But before they legalize it, though, there has to be education. That's part of what I, my strongest push is, because I've seen the benefits on my patients, on a lot of my patients. And I have the sickest population of patients, patients on dialysis. And the benefit I've seen in those that I've prescribed it to, or I've recommended, because they don't prescribe, we recommend it, I've rec recommended it to, um, has been tremendous. And that's why I continue pushing it. But here in Nigeria, its illegality, the fact that it's illegal, makes it a more dangerous thing, dangerous um, situation to be a part of. The stigma attached to it, doing it in open, I mean, there are cleaner ways to do it now. You know, in the States, or I was in the UK recently, uh, or in Canada, they have va most people just would vape it. They don't even take it like the way they take it here. Mm. You know, the Igbo, where they, they light, they light it up and all that, they have to roll it up and... There's a place for for them that do that, but the cleanup versions of it and the vaping it, the gummies. Oh my god! I mean, it's you're, you're just talking <laughs> <laughs> because that stigma. <laughs> yeah, like, that no, stigma. No, no, no. We gotta like, get rid of it. We have to. Okay, NJ, let me come to you. So for me, I'm taking. I would like to know. I know you've said um, you've stated a lot of, you know, benefits mm. of. Cannabis, and I, but I know that there's always a, downside. there's always a downside yeah. to it. So I would like to ask, long term, what are the long term? I know that there is, um, I think from research I saw, um, CHS. Yes. So yes. I wanted to ask, what are the other, you know, long term effects of the constant use? Right. Good question. So. Marijuana should be ideally used in periods, not chronically. Because mm -hmm. if you use it chronically every day, the likelihood of developing the syndrome you're talking about, hyperemesis syndrome, mm -hmm. is the cannabis-induced hyperemesis syndrome. Hyperemesis is vomiting continuously. It will make you nauseous, make you want to throw up every morning. And that happens after you've, done, you've had chronic use. Usually more than a year, but it can be as long as 10 years of use before you develop those symptoms. And to fix it, you just stop. It may take a while to stop. Is it to easy to stop? Well, because mm, I, I feel way. like if, if, for instance, I start to depend on um, marijuana for maybe inspiration as a creative, it's going to be difficult for me to say, you know, you know what, I'm just going to stop. I believe that it, I become very dependent on it, right? Is it not addictive? Wouldn't I get to that point where 
it seems like I can't think, I can't do anything. Like my friends, I mean, literally, if they didn't have that, um, they don't they write the exam. They won't come to, they won't write the exam. Because he literally will tell you, say, because he's read his books, but he believes that he cannot remember until he smokes it and his eyes are always red and his lips dark so for me i just did not like the the look that it gave but when you are telling gummies and vaping you know <laughs> you're making it very making it clean <laughs> you're making and, it very and, clean and, and for you know, the but, I mean, but he he grew that um dependence on it mm -hmm. that you know it, it was difficult for him to and i think his mind has already told him that i can't i okay. can't pass my exams yes. if i don't if totally i don't mental. take this totally mental it's a mind thing because vitamin d but the vitamins, if you're deficient in them and you take them, you get better. Sometimes you feel better, sometimes you don't even know the difference. But if you stop taking them, you won't necessarily develop symptoms for a while. Some vitamins, you develop symptoms that you need to take the vitamins to get rid of the symptoms. Now, with cannabis, if you stopped taking it and you were using it for creativity, for mm -hmm. instance, would it make you less creative? No. But the fact that you're not taking it, you know you would have to put more effort into doing so. So it's just easier to just take it. Hmm. So you're not addicted because there will be no symptoms that will arise if you're not taking it, like sweating and like with heroin. None of that. Okay, so let's go back to this money matter because you say it's green gold. Yes. I mean green, green oil. Green oil. Green oil. Green oil. Mm. It's a new oil. So it means that when I'm looking at the bone now, I'm seeing crude oil. Yes. Yes. And I can see some, what's it called? Dollar Forex. Yes. Income. Dollar signs. Yes. You, yeah. Yes. So I mean, so really, because we're talking about branching of alternative sources of income, you know, for our country. And, you know, so if we truly want to grow this, because I know again that um, there is a way to grow it that is acceptable, that is free from pesticides and all of those things. What is the, uh, what's the, for, so for a farmer that is thinking now, okay, can I grow this for business? And let's say this, um, this um, House of Assembly are able to come together, do the thing and finally pass it into law to say, okay, it is now legal to be able to transact, you know, businesses and export cannabis, right? So what would be the, 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 the structure like in terms of growing the plant? Is this something expensive to do for people that are thinking about doing it for business? You know? So there's, there are different ways to grow cannabis. And there are different environments that are created to grow it, depending on what the situation is in that part of the world. Um, it's not, it doesn't have to be expensive. It could be ridiculously expensive. It depends on where you are. That's why I talk about education. Education has to be key. Before they legalized things in the States, there was a ton of education, especially to the growers. Because the, the users are on one side. The physicians that are part of it are in another group. But the growers, the farmers, are a different cup entirely. And they have to be educated. So talking about how to grow it is a whole education. But in a nutshell, there, there are different types of of, of growing marijuana. And you know, going into, into the details of, of its growth is much more challenging for me than going into the downsides mm. of its growth. Because mm. growing it the wrong way, um, obviously there'll be less quantity made. Because the whole idea of marijuana is the quantity of it. That's, what, that's why it's a very lucrative business. It's a very lucrative business and getting away, whenever you're taking the business away from the illegal part of things, mm. or making it legal, there's that, that transition period is a very dangerous period because many people that were benefiting from its illegality mm. will be very happy about that and they will fight that and they have different parts of the world. So that's a bigger concern for me than anything else. That transition period, we have to first of all educate people about it, and then we have to put things in place to make sure people that are better, that part of the education will be to let the people know that people that are benefiting from it, in, in, with it being illegal, let them, to let them know that they can still benefit from it lucratively mm -hmm. when it's legalized. But obviously because they have to share the profit. They don't want to do that. Because there'll be more people, more hands in that pot mm -hmm. if it's now legalized. Um, people now go into it for business, especially when you have economies, countries, and many of them, their economies actually start to de not depend on it, but a big chunk of their economy, their, their revenue generation comes from that. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I really, really would want to push education with. 
and safety. The safety factor is a very, very big one. Mm. Uti, let me come to you. Okay, so I would like to ask around. So we know that we don't have the best of healthcare systems here in Nigeria. Um, I don't know what the situation is. So of course, we, we still have a very small population of people who have access to things like HMOs, um, and basic healthcare is, is expensive. So if we had this as an option, for example, for, for people in terms of managing pain and all the other various medical or medicinal uses, um, what would affordability be like if it was then legalized? I know you said, you know, of course, it gets cheaper, but can you give us some sense today of how it compares, perhaps in the States, compared to other sort of pain medication? Is it, is it an affordable thing? Is it a, is it is, is that something that, you know, Nigerians can look forward to people who have those kind of conditions and with, with a measure of affordability? That's a good question. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of how to answer it without sounding very negative. But the point is, the point I'll make with that is, cannabis is expensive. <laughs> Let's just put it out there. It is an expensive drug. It's not as expensive as cocaine and other things out there, but it's expensive. When they legalized it and they started having the shops that sell the vape, <laughs> the oils, the gummies, my patients still complain about how expensive it is. That they think it'd be cheaper to just go get a hit off the street. Mm. So in legalizing, it's just like Big Pharma. When things are brought into the market, there's that expensive period where they make their profits. And eventually it will become more available to people that are less um, financially viable. Right now, it's, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. In the States, it's an expensive um, treatment to have. Um, but because of its benefits, the patients, especially when you're in pain, when you're in chronic pain all the time from something like mm -hmm. arthritis, and you finally have something that makes you feel better mm -hmm. and is not dangerous, because all the Tylenol and all the um, paracetamol and ibuprofen that they use for pain and then the narcotics have their downsides. Mm. Plenty of them. Marijuana has much less downside than those medications. So we talk about the stigma attached to it, obviously, is the issue, right? But when you talk about the fact that, you know, bringing it into the legalized part of, of, of things now, it will become more affordable. It will become um, more um, lucrative to more people. So it become an economic, you mentioned the fact that they were talking about in Ondo whether because many people are using it, why not just legalize it? True, but legalize it with lots of education. That's one part that we always leave out. We have to educate. I had to get educated before I even touched anything because I would known about the stigma about marijuana growing up. I never used it growing up, never did, ever. I thought it was horrible. I thought smoking was better. Mm. Now I know. I actually tell my patients that smoke, that they're better with marijuana than nicotine yeah, and cigarettes. cigarettes. Absolutely, yeah. without a doubt. And if they're used to that habit of this, having something that then use marijuana. Now, again, I'll emphasize in countries where it's legal, not in Nigeria, because it's not legal. So no one should be using it here. Hmm. But we should get to that place where it is so people can use it. People that need to use it can but, use it. But speaking to Uti's question, if we are the ones growing it, mm -hmm. I don't know what the structure is like in the U.S., whether they're the ones growing yes. it, right? If we have huge farms, right, that are growing, for instance, it becomes legal and they're growing, shouldn't the cost be, you know, affordable for, for patients? And they now look forward to probably using that as an alternative source of medicine. I think it will become it will, affordable. It will, it will, but in, okay. in, um, in the States, it didn't. Remember how the pharmaceutical companies are in the States. Hmm. It's very different from anywhere else in the world. Yeah. That's why, it's, that, that's why they're, they're so... It's such an expensive, lucrative thing there. And marijuana took the same, or cannabis took the same um, platform, if you, if you will, and it's become expensive because they've refined it, the products are now refined. And so you talk about how it's clean, and it's vaping, the gummies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're just growing it on the farm. Trouble. You know, just growing on the farm and just taking the weed and just rolling it. If you like calling gummies, <laughs> now you go you the smoke. <laughs> 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 now you go you the chocolate. In the gummies. <laughs> Forget it, now you go. Now you go the inside. <laughs> go ahead, Angel. <laughs> Oh, well, um, for me, I just feel like we've learned quite a bit. And <laughs> like you said, the doctor has gone a long way to actually, you know, bring to light a lot of things that we didn't know. 
But um, yes, yeah, so I, I, my last, I don't know if it's a, yeah, my last question would be, what are your thoughts about, um, you know, uh, the re I know you deal in the recreational, so not even your thoughts, but why, why is there, the question I want to ask is, why is it divided? Recreational why, versus yes, medicinal? Yes, what, like, what is the difference? Oh, the difference is just the fact that with recreational, you don't need the physicians to recommend it. Oh, well, it's still the same product? The same product? Yes, yeah, same product. But right. without the physician recommending it. In that the one, States, you have recommended it for yourself. Yeah, you can't take doing... yourself. You just go into the... Into the, into yeah, the but they are being, most of the time, yeah. in the dispensary, they are being sold side by side. Yes. Hmm. But in the country, in the, well, let me speak to this, about the States. In the yeah. States where it's legalized recreationally, there's no doctors prescribing anything. Well, I take that back. Many people still go to the doctors because they want it for a specific thing. So they want to be guided through it. But in Florida, where I am, you can't get to recreationally. They're trying you to have pass to that get now it through, through a, physician. a physician. Yes. Okay, so that way, it gives it a bit of, you know, Let me ask safety. this question. It says, your topic, your topic on the impact of cannabis on life is very interesting. I believe no country in the world will legalize cannabis usage for socialization, but rather for medical treatment purposes. For this reason... Is not open to everyone. Also, studies show that people who use cannabis have mental issues mm -mm. and emotional too. This is some Santos. No, ah. no, no. So, <laughs> they say I, the people when they use cannabis, I, they, they call no doctor. I, I, can, I, can, I can see where, why you would say that. But the truth is, many mental issues are treated with cannabis. So, people that, have, that use cannabis mm. and have mental issues, I don't know what that means because that could be so varied. They could just be um, depressed, mm. or they could be bipolar. They, there's so many other, so many mental conditions, mm -hmm. but the mental conditions will not come from marijuana unless it's laced, mm. unless it's mm -hmm. adulterated, unless it's mixed with something. So if it is pure marijuana, no, nah, you're not gonna go mental. Ah. Doctor has convinced everybody to. Nah, you're gonna go high. <laughs> if you get your high, you'll come down. <laughs> what goes up? We'll Can I, one more question. Yes. I know I've heard um, there's a popular one that has been making the rounds in uh, you know, the lower ends of Nigeria. It's Loud. called Colorado. Oh. What is that? And why does it have so much of an effect on an individual? Because I know I've seen it on, I've seen some videos on Instagram and most of these individuals end up in the gutter looking like they're about to give up on life. They have a very, very aggressive Wait, is Colorado, reaction is it, it cannabis too? It's a type and of loud cannabis. is cannabis as it's well. It's type of cannabis. But they are all laced. They're all laced. No, well, not necessarily laced. Okay. But they have different potencies. Mm. Colorado, well, loud is supposed to be, that's the more, more popular, common one that I hear about here. Um, Colorado, I don't know that much about. I heard about it recently. My last time I was here, I heard about it. And I was curious to know whether it was an indica, whether it was a sativa, because when they give up these names, they're not, they're not, Dividing it the way we divide it in the States. Is mm. it an indica, a sativa, or a hybrid? Combination of the two. You know what? Quickly hold that thought. Please mm. ask your guests what happens to youth in the U.S. now that they have legalized Indian hemp. I'm a resident in the United States. There are states where it is not legal. Having lived in Netherlands, there is a costly fallout to society if socially um, authorized. I would advise that cannabis only be legalized in the medical sphere and for government controlled exportation sorry exportation purposes with all due respect doctor vaping is detrimental to our health i know an award-winning heart surgeon here in houston who weeps because one of his children vapes and this is essay she lives in houston texas right doctor quickly okay. 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 So, so vaping can be anything that goes in through the lungs the only thing that's going through the lungs is oxygen mm. yeah nothing you smoke is healthy to the lung. That's why they use other ways to get it in. Mm. But if you do vape, it's safer than smoking it. But vaping itself can cause issues in the lungs as well. Mm. That's totally true. As regards to the fallout with the youths, youths should not be using it. Mm. Absolutely not, unless it's, it's recommended for, med for medicinal purposes. As a physician, of course, I'm biased. I think you should be guided by the physicians. I really do think so. Many people don't agree with me. Many people don't want that extra step to get what they want to get going to a physician. But I think it makes it safer. It makes it more, more purposeful, more intentional. You're taking it for a reason, and you know why. Mm -hmm. It helps you treat that reason better. I was just taking it because you enjoy it. 
Unfortunately, most people enjoy it. I'm taking it for a reason. They just don't know what reason that is. Hmm. They've not been diagnosed. On that note, ladies, <laughs> have you been convinced or you've been confused? <laughs> we leave that to you people. But we need to bring you back. You see this cannabis matter. You see, I'm always excited when I'm talking about it. <laughs> and you haven't even One day now, I've not tried it. Ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Maybe the day I'm trying it, you're going to be there with me by my side. <laughs> I wanted to ask a final question on a lighter note, but we run out of Oh, yeah, time. quickly, quickly. What is it? Why do people get the munchies after they reportedly get the munchies after they <laughs> <laughs> What is the munchies? The munchies, you get hungry. Oh, okay. Especially for carbs. Mm. Um, but they get the munchies because of the way... The actual... Marijuana actually acts on receptors in the body. There are two types of receptors. They're called the C... The, oh, the, the, this, oh, we ran out of time. We ran out of time. <laughs> uh, Uti, we will bring you. Make sure you are in studio the time, Doctor. I wish you guys were coming back for part two. But thank you so much, Doctor. I think You're this welcome. was really fun. Was that, really I fun. enjoyed it. I enjoyed yes. it. Yes. <laughs> 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 you, say, you should come and try weed. <laughs> this show, I love this show. <laughs> thank you so much, Doctor. You're welcome. All You're right. Welcome. So thank you, Uti. Thank you, NJ. Before we go, please ensure you follow us across all our social media handles. That way, show Africa you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote for today, here it is again. I think the doctor found it very interesting. He said, I find it quite ironic that the most dangerous thing about weed hmm? is getting caught. I mean, how did they put it? Yes, it's, it's getting caught. <laughs> it's getting caught that is the most dangerous part of the weed. It's not using the weed, though. No, <laughs> and this was on Bill Murray. We'll see you guys. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen, child. <laughs>